everyone, I'm Lauren from Wildlife Sydney Zoo and I have some very special guests here for you guys. This is Mirren and Zara and they are our Tasmanian Devils. Now we're all super excited for our school holidays and these girls are our superheroes here and their strength, oh sorry, their power is super strength. Now I don't know if you guys saw it but Zara actually just showed you what her super strength is and it's actually in their jaw. Now Tasmanian Devils, they have extremely powerful jaws. In fact, they have the most powerful bite strength of any animal of their size. Now you can see they are quite a small species, but their jaw does not play around. So they've got extremely strong muscles around their jaw and they also have a very strong skull as well. Now the reason that they are so important and they are superheroes to our environment is because of that jaw. So they obviously need very strong teeth and very strong jaw muscles to be able to eat what they eat. Now these girls, they do occasionally prey um, on live food, but they tend to mostly eat carcasses, which is really, really special. Because if you can imagine a dead animal that will attract all sorts of nasty little bacteria and also ruts and uh, insects that can spread different diseases. These girls, they do us a really great job and they'll actually clean up all those carcasses on the road as well for us. Um, now we do have a pretty cool thing for you guys as well. What we have is some meat for them. We throw it on a bungee for them. Uh, and you can actually play a bit of tug of war with them. But what I'll get you guys to watch is just them playing tug of war with each other. And you'll be able to see just how strong they are. And it's pretty fun. Hopefully they'll even show you how loud they can be when they're trying to get their way. So I'll throw it down for them. Watch out girls. <laughs> so they play tug of war with each other and in fact in the wild they'll actually share a carcass so Tasmanian devils they are considered a solitary species uh, but they will eat on the same carcass they do actually growl and yell at each other uh, but it is just to say hey I'm the dominant one I get to have the nice yummy pieces of this meat now we do have two big pieces of meat for them on today so that they do get their own little piece. This is actually kangaroo tail, one of their favorite foods. So they get kangaroo meat, they also get chicken um, and they also get rats as well. So they get a variety of meat throughout the week depending on the day, but kangaroo meat by far is their favorite. Now you can see they are pretty strong and once they do get that uh, root tail off the bungee cord, they'll be able to eat and devour every piece of that tail right down to the bone and the fur. Now that again is ex exactly why they are so special because if you can imagine something like that lying on the side of the road that's going to attract yucky vermin and obviously spread diseases. Now I will show you a little cool thing that we have here. This is actually a Tasmanian devil skull. Now if you look at them and look at the skull, this doesn't look too big, but that's because on their head they've got a lot of muscle that surrounds that skull. Uh, and their teeth are actually extremely sharp as well. Now a Tasmanian devil, they have the ability to open their mouth at an 80 degree angle. So not quite 90, but almost 80, uh, almost 90, so at 80 degrees. Now they do this um, not only to eat their meal of course, but also to uh, ward off any other uh, predators or of course other Tasmanian devils. So when they open their mouth like that, they're saying look how big and scary I am and how much damage my jaw can do. So they are extremely impressive. Now one of the reasons these girls are so important to us of course um, is because they are a, an endangered species. Uh, so these girls are three and four years old, Mirren and Dara. And a really cool little fact about them is they're actually half sisters. So they um, share the same mum, uh, but not the same dad. Um, so they have both also contributed to our breeding program of the Tasmanian devil. So they've both had their own little um, joeys. And once they've been bred once, they're no longer used in that program and they're sent here where they can live the rest of their life. So three and four years old doesn't sound too old and luckily for them it isn't. 
Uh, but it is actually what we consider middle age for a Tasmanian devil. So in the wild, they will only live for about six to seven years. Um, and in human care, they can live up to eight to 10 years. So we do have a while left with them. Um, and we're hoping to do lots of um, extra little enrichment things for school holidays. So one of the most common questions we get asked about the Tasmanian devils is why they're called Tasmanian devils. Now, of course, these girls are only found in Tasmania. Once upon a time, they were found on mainland Australia, but unfortunately they got wiped out uh, long, long ago uh, from hunters. Now the word devil is one of the most um, interesting things about these guys uh, is because the screech that they make actually sounds like similar to that of a demon and the discoverer of this species thought it sounded extremely shrieking um, that like a, de a demon. Now the other reason they are called the devil is because of their bright red ears. If you do take a look at their ears they don't have any fur on them and they are that bright red colour. In the moonlight, they shine a nice bright red and it looks like devil's horns. They are nocturnal, so you don't see much of their body, of course, because they have that black fur. So instead, um, all you will see is these bright red ears that look like devil's horns. So that's where they got their name, the Tasmanian devils. Now these girls are also the um, only, or one of the only carnivorous marsupials and the biggest carnivorous marsupials. So their closest relatives are the quoll um, and the dunnart, and they are also carnivorous marsupials, so these girls are counted as the biggest. Now they can give birth to about 30 to 40 young um, at a time, which is really, really cool. Uh, but unfortunately, they only have four teeth inside their pouch. So when the babies um, are birth, they will climb into the pouch and try and find a teat. And unfortunately, only four will be able to find the teeth and the rest of them actually don't uh, make it. And because the mom is um, starved from trying to uh, raise healthy young, she'll actually eat those young um, to keep herself nice and healthy. But that is another reason why they are considered quite in, um, endangered, because they only can have four young um, at a time. One of the carers of the Tasmanian Devils, I am also one of their trainers, uh, as we do a lot of training here at Wildlife Sydney Zoo with a lot of the species that you see here. So the Tasmanian Devil training, we have trained a few different behaviours. The number one training behaviour that we train them and most of the animals here is what we call target training. So what they do is we have a target on a stick and they touch the target with their nose and that is basically the behaviour right there. Now it sounds like a very simple behavior and it is, but it is a baseline behavior that we can get them to um, move into more complex behaviors. So the next behavior they have been trained to do is actually to show us their pouch. Now they're not gonna do it at the moment, they're very preoccupied with their nice yummy um, roo tail, but what they will do is put their paws up on the glass and we'll be able to get a look in their uh, pouch. This allows us to make sure that the pouch is nice and clean and that they are grooming it and keeping it clean themselves. But it also allows us to see if there is any abnormalities in there. One of the diseases, or sorry, one of the tumors that uh, the Dazurid family can get, that is the family of the Tasmanian devil, is a memory gland tumor inside their pouch. So this is a really useful behavior for us to keep an eye on their pouch. Now the most recent behaviour we've also got them trained to do is also another really useful thing for us and it's to take a, an injection voluntarily. Now we are in the middle of finalising that behaviour but they're doing really really well. We actually get them to line up um, along a cage for us and we poke them with a, a needle for an injection and that allows us to um, give them any injections that are yearly injections that they need are stress-free so we don't need to handle them to do that and they voluntarily walk along the page for us to uh, be able to do that. So trained behaviours that we do here at the zoo 
Are they are to make the life of the animals less stressful and of course the life of the keepers and the work of the keepers less stressful as well. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you learned a little something about our Tasmanian devils and I hope that you enjoyed this little talk. Thank you guys. Bye.